Hello again, Physics 20s. In today's lesson, we are going to talk about a property of a wave referred to as refraction. And we've actually already talked a little bit about this. Uh, when we looked at some examples previously where we had a spring that was made of two materials, and then a wave pulse approached the medium change between the two spring densities, and part of the wave got reflected and part of it got transmitted. The part of the wave that gets transmitted, there's a different word we can use to describe what's happening to that wave, and that word is refraction. And that is actually the more technically accurate word that we're going to look, look at in a two-dimensional type plane. Learning outcome is to describe how the speed of a wave depends on the characteristics of the medium. Okay, so let's define refraction. Refraction occurs when a wave enters a region where the medium changes. And again, a medium is an area with roughly a uniform density. So some of the examples I used before would be going from like cold water into hot water, or in the case of the spring from like a spring with like a, a smaller spring stiffness compared to a larger spring stiffness. But refraction is going to occur when your wave moves into a different medium. When you move into a different medium, both the wavelength and the speed will change. Depending on whether the uh, you're going into a faster or slower medium, that'll either increase or decrease the speed. And then what we, what we know is, according to the universal wave equation, which tells us that V is equal to F times the wavelength, and there's a direct relationship between V and lambda, which means that if V goes up, lambda goes up. And they have, so again, they have that direct relationship. However, this can only be true if the frequency of the wave is unchanged. And as mentioned before, frequency when you go from one medium to another one is constant. And the only thing that can change the frequency of your wave is whatever got the wave started in the first place, that being the source. Okay, so let's look at the two cases. And again, we're gonna look at this from a two-dimensional perspective. So think of like a bird's eye view. I have a refracting surface and on the bottom part, I have a fast medium and on the top part, I have a slow medium. Now, the analogy I'm gonna to use to explain refraction is I'm gonna use uh, a marching band. So we're gonna start off with a marching band in a faster medium. So we'll see the faster medium is they're just marching on concrete. And then what they're going to do is they're going to walk into a slower medium and that slower medium is going to be mud. Obviously it's going to be more difficult to walk through the mud in comparison uh, to on the concrete. Okay, we're gonna represent uh, the wave again by using the analogy of a marching band and we're gonna draw the wave front. So again, the wave front on a wave front diagram is just representing the crest of the wave. So what we can do is we can imagine this horizontal red line. We have a bunch of people who are marching just vertically, uh, who are marching towards the, the top of the screen that we can see here in a straight line. Okay, so the marching band starts marching upward and then keeps marching, keeps marching, etc. Now, what I'm interested in is what happens when half or part of the line actually gets into the slow medium. Well, the dashed line represents what would happen if there was no medium change. If there was no medium change, everybody in that line would just keep marching forward at the exact same speed. But if you go into a slower medium, the people who enter the slower medium first are going to get, are gonna kind of like lag behind. And specifically, so let's say there's a person at the very end of the line here. This person's gonna enter the mud the first, so because they enter the mud the first, they're going to really, really lag behind. So in comparison to any other part of the wave front, there's going to be the biggest lag. As compared to like a person who's in the marching line right here does enter the mud, but they're only in it for a smaller amount of time. Therefore, they lag just a little bit tinier behind. But the key thing is like once the people in the line enter, enter the mud, then there's going to be some uh, lag behind. Okay, and we'll look at the next wave front. So again, the dashed line represents what would happen if your uh, 
if they didn't enter the slower medium. And again, because they enter the slower medium, they're going to start to lag behind the rest of the band that's marching on the concrete. And the same thing at the top. They lag behind as a result of going into this mud. Now, the thing to note here is when wave energy goes into a slower medium, the speed in which the wave propagates is going to decrease, and so is the wavelength. Now, we already know that in accordance to the universal wave equation. So again, if V is equal to F times lambda, and if the frequency is constant, if we go into a slower medium, it means my wavelength should decrease. And we can actually see this in the diagram here. So again, your wavelength is represented by the distance from your crest to your crest. And again, this is what the wavefront diagram shows. So I can see here that the distance from crest to crest, when I go into the slower medium, it's getting a little bit smaller. So uh, in addition to using the universal wave equation to support this, we can also support this just by constructing a, a wavefront diagram and using a relatively simple analogy, I think. Now we're also going to show the wave rays. So let's just erase the let's erase the drawing stuff here. So once again, a wave ray is it just shows what direction the wave energy is moving. In this case, right here, be indicating what direction the the marching band, I suppose, is going. The wave ray is always perpendicular to the wave front. Okay, so I have an instant ray of wave energy that's directed uh, towards the top of the page, and then. When we enter the uh, slower medium, it turns out that my wave energy, its direction actually alters because once again, the wave ray must be perpendicular to the wave front. And since the wave front is now at a bit of an angle, so is the wave ray that we're going to say is refracted. So the refracted ray just means. Uh, Usually when we define refraction, we say refraction is the change in speed of a wave when you go from one medium to another one. And that's also going to be accompanied by a wavelength change and also a direction change. So the wave ray is actually, the energy is now being directed in a different direction. The opposite case, in this case, we're going to go from a slow to a fast medium. And we'll start off again with my marching band. So in this case, we're going to start off with the marching band that's all marching in the mud. And then they're eventually going to get back onto the concrete. And let's see what happens here. Okay, so my marching band starts uh, marching towards the top of the page. They keep marching, they march, they march. Okay, they're in the mud initially. So this dashed line represents what would happen if like there was no boundary change. This kept marching in the mud. Now, when you march into the concrete, well, the person who gets onto the concrete first is then going to be able to walk faster. So instead of the actual wavefront lagging behind, it's actually going to press forward a little bit. So again, this person at the very end of the line, they're the person who first is going to enter the area where it's concrete and it's easier to walk. So as a result, their position on the wavefront is actually much further ahead in comparison to somebody right here who only had a smaller amount of time to walk on the concrete. And if we keep going, again, we're going to find that our wave front is going to now start to press ahead. Instead of lagging behind, it presses ahead. So what do we notice happens here? Well, when you go into a faster medium, your wave speed is going to increase, obviously, because it's a faster medium. Again, according to the universal wave equation, V is equal to F times lambda. If frequency is constant, which it is, when you go from one medium to another one, if your uh, speed goes up, then your wavelength should go up. And we can observe this on the diagram. So on the diagram, again, your wave front, distance between wave fronts is crest to crest. So this would be your wavelength. And then what I can see is my wavelength is getting quite a bit bigger as a result of going into the faster medium. So once again, uh, if I wanted to justify this beyond just using the universal wave equation, we could construct a wavefront diagram just to also support the idea that when you go into a faster medium, your wavelength is also going to increase. Now let's look at the direction change. So what's gonna happen for this one? So once again, your wave ray, which tells you what direction the energy is going, is perpendicular to the wave fronts. So initially, it's going to be just directed towards the top of the page. 
Now, it enters this faster medium, the wave rate needs to continue to be perpendicular to the wave front, so its direction is going to alter. It needs to alter again so that the ray is perpendicular to the wave front. And again, we call this the refracted ray because the refracted ray is indicating that uh, you have a change in speed, you have a change in wavelength, and you also have a change in direction. And again, that's exactly how I define what refraction is. So the change in speed of a wave uh, as a result of moving from one medium to another one, which is also accompanied by a wavelength change and a direction change. Okay, let's focus more on this direction change though. If a wave ray goes into a slower medium, it will actually bend towards the normal line. So let's look at this. We have a refracting surface that's horizontal from our perspective. We're going to go from a fast medium to a slow medium. So once again, we're going to move towards the top of the page. And I have an instant ray that is approaching the medium. The refracted ray, again, when you go from one medium to another one, your, your direction needs to change. And it changes in a way so that the wave ray is going to bend towards a normal line. Well, this is going to result that we need to draw a normal line to do this. So the normal line would be a line at the point of contact here that is perpendicular to a refracting surface. So this normal line would look like a vertical line. Again, the normal line must be perpendicular to your surface. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, if there was no direction change, the instant ray would just keep going in a direction like that, okay? It'd just keep going like undeflected. But what we notice is that when you go into a slower medium, it turns out that this refracted ray actually bends and turns in a direction so it gets closer to the normal line. And that's what I've stated here. A wave ray bends towards a normal line when it slows down. Now we can actually see this from our wavefront diagrams as well. So let's go back to, is this going to a slower medium? Okay, so we're gonna go back to case one. Okay, so case one. So let's try to draw the normal line on here. So I'm just gonna erase again all of the ink. Okay, so your normal line would be, it's a line that is going to, at the point of contact, it is going to be perpendicular. So perpendicular would be a line that maybe looks something like, perhaps this, okay, that's perpendicular, roughly perpendicular to the surface. Now, if the wave ray just went through undeflected, it would just go in a straight vertical line. But what I'm noticing here is that the refracted ray changes direction, so it actually bends. It gets closer to where the normal line is. Again, that's supported by what I've identified in this slide here. Okay, wave ray bends toward the normal line when it slows down. Okay, a couple other things. There's, there's a few angles here. So theta one, which represents the angle measured from the, inst the normal line to the instant ray to the normal line, we call that the angle of instance. And theta two, which is the angle from the refracted ray to the normal line, that's what we call, not the angle of reflection, we're gonna call it the angle of refraction. Reflection is when you hit a surface and bounce back. Refraction is when you hit a different surface, but this time you pass through. Okay, now two, a wave ray bends away from the normal line when it speeds up. So once again, let's look at a refracting surface, horizontal. This time we're gonna go from a slow medium to a fast one. So our direction is gonna be directed vertically upward or uh, upward again. Okay, so I have an instant ray that approaches the boundary change. And when it hits a boundary change, because there's a speed change, there'll be a direction change and a wavelength change as well. If we draw the normal line, it's once again perpendicular to the refracting surface. So we've got this. Now, if we drew the instant ray as if there was no refraction, it would just be a line that just continues to move straight forward, something like this. So in this scenario, what is this refracted ray doing relative to the normal line? Well, it's actually moving away from it. Okay, it's getting further away from the actual normal line. And if we go back to our other illustration, we can see this. So going back to this one, if we have a wave ray, so it approaches going into a faster medium. 
So my normal line would once again be maybe something like this. Your normal line would be perpendicular to your refracting surface. Now, normally, if there was no medium change, your ray would just keep going through like this. So what's this refracting ray doing in comparison to the purple normal line? It's actually moving away from it. Okay, so your wavefront diagram also does support this observation. Okay, wave rate bends away from the normal line when it when it speeds up. Now, I'm going to give you, I mean, I'll give you a little acronym you can use if you want just a quick memorization tool to like to know like what happens when you go from one medium to another one. Uh, I got this from an, uh, another teacher. So uh, the acronym is FAST. And what this means is if you go into a faster medium, then your wave ray is going to bend away from the normal. If you go into a slower medium, then your wave ray is going to bend towards the normal line. And we just cut the acronym in half. We have the two parts that describe how the direction is going to appropriately change depending on whether you go into a slower medium or into a faster one. So all of this would describe refraction qualitatively. We can also look at it quantitatively. There is a law referred to as Snell's law or the law of refraction, which does relate the following quantities. It relates the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction, and the speeds and wavelengths of your wave in each medium. This equation is on your formula sheet, I believe in like the wave section. So you have sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 equals lambda 1 over lambda 2 equals v1 over v2. Now, the subscripts 1 and 2, 1 would mean that you're in medium number 1, so whatever the starting medium is. And then medium number two would be the medium that you're moving into. So this equation, sine theta one, theta one is the angle of incidence. Sine theta two, theta two is the angle of refraction. Lambda one would be the wavelength in medium one. Lambda two, the wavelength in medium two. V one, the of speed in medium one. V2 would be the speed in medium number two. Now, if you do also look at the formula sheet, you'll also notice there's another component to this equation. So the other component you're going to see to the equation has something like N2 over N1 and is equal to this. Just ignore this N2 over N1 right now. It has no application to a mechanical wave, which is all we're focusing on right now, but it does have an application to an electromagnetic wave. So back in, in, in physics 30 later on, we'll come back to this equation, except this time we'll actually use the N2 or the N1 part of the equation. For now, we don't need to. All right, a couple of simple examples. As a wave travels from a region with a speed of 45 meters per second into a region with a speed of 60 meters per second, if the wavelength in the slow region is 1.5, calculate the wavelength in the fast region. Okay, so first of all, let's identify what our different mediums are. So I'll say let one equal your, we're starting in a slow medium. And we'll say two is the fast medium. Okay, so what's this information here? Well, the 45 meters per second, that would be the speed in medium one. This one, 60 meters per second, would be the speed in medium two. The wavelength in the slow region, well, that would be the wavelength. So this would be lambda one. And then it wants the wavelength in the faster region. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to calculate lambda two. So let's write down our law of refractions. So the law of refraction tells me that sine theta one 
over sine theta 2 is equal to lambda 1 over lambda 2 is equal to v1 over v2. Now, we don't need to use the sine theta 1 or sine theta 2 part of the equation because we're not dealing with any angles here. So we can just ignore this part of the equation and we can just look at uh, just two-thirds of the equation, the lambda 1 over lambda 2 equals v1 over v2. Now, to manipulate this equation, we can do some, can do some cross multiplication. So what I would do is we're trying to get lambda 2 by itself. So I would have the v1 and lambda 2 switch spots. Okay, so these guys switch positions. And then let's bring this v2 up to the top here. So this would then give me your wavelength in medium 2 would be equal to the wavelength in medium 1 times v2 divided by v1. Now, before we even perform this calculation, we should know what happens to the wavelength. If you're going into a faster medium, your wavelength should go up because your wavelength and speed are always directly related according to the universal wave equation if your frequency is constant. So let's confirm this. So lambda 1 would be uh, 1.5 meters. La uh, V2 would be the speed in the faster medium, so that's 60 meters per second. Divide this by 45 meters per second. Okay, so I believe that's all that's happening here is our speed should be increasing by a factor of, I think, four-thirds. So let's check this. Let's go 1.5 times 60 divided by 45. And again, if you're going to a faster medium, I should have an increased wavelength. And the wavelength value I get is 2.0 meters. Okay, second one. Water wave is traveling in deep water. So we're going to say let 1 equal deep water. No, it's got that weird horizontal line thing going on here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so we'll say let 1 equal deep water. And then we're going into a shallow region, which is region number two. So we'll call that shallow water. Now we have some different variables in this case. So the, the speed in deep water, this one would be V1, enters a region with an angle of instance. The angle of instance is going to be the variable theta one. And it tells me the speed in the shallow region is 11.2 meters per second. So that's going to be V2. And then I want to calculate the angle of refractions. The angle of refraction is the theta two variable. Once again, we should know what's happening to the angle before we even do the question qualitatively. So what we're doing is we're going to a slower medium. Well, what happens if you go into a slower medium? Your wave rate bends towards the normal line. If you bend towards the normal line, then there would be a smaller angle between your ray and the normal. Therefore, your angle should decrease. But let's do the math to support this. Okay, so let's write down the law of refraction. So my law of refraction is sine theta 1 over sine theta 2 is equal to lambda 1 over lambda 2, and that is equal to v1 over v2. Now, in this case, I don't care about the wavelength, so I can get rid of this part of the, the equation. I don't need to deal with wavelength. Okay, we want to get sine theta 2 by itself, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take sine theta 2 and v1 and have them flip spots, and then I'll bring this v2 term up to the numerator on the other side. 
So then this would give me your sine theta 2. would be equal to v2 times sine of the angle of incidence, theta 1. And we're going to divide this by v1. OK, I want to calculate the angle, not sine of the angle. So we're going to take the inverse side of both sides to do this. This would then turn into theta 2 would be equal to the inverse sine. And now we'll start to plug the numbers in. OK, so V2 is the speed in the shallow region, which is 11.2 meters per second. And then times sine theta 1. So sine theta 1 is 30 degrees. If you're wondering why the speed is, by the way, slower in the shallow region, it's just because the the bottom surface of the water is in closer proximity with all your water particles. So they'd actually be like rubbing against the surface, thereby slowing them down a little bit. OK, V1 is the speed in the faster medium or deep water, so 15.0 meters per second. And then let's go ahead and calculate this. So once again, I've already identified that this angle should go down because we are going into a medium that is, we're going to a slower medium. If you go into a slower medium, then your wave rate should bend towards a normal line. Okay, so I get 21.9 degrees. And if we round that to the nearest whole degree, it would be 22 degrees. So our angle does indeed decrease, telling me that the wave rate is, is bending towards the normal line. All right, that's it for this lesson on refraction. And you can complete the assignment called refraction. And then the le next lesson, I'm going to review a couple of very important fundamental wave properties. We've already talked about interference, but I'm going to introduce you to another important wave property that is referred to as diffraction. And I will talk to you then.